This is Grace with Graceful Living. Today we have a special guest, Jade Lewis. She is going to talk about how she got rid of her irritable bowel syndrome. Hi, my name is Jade Lewis and about a couple years ago I was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome and I was having, my entire life pretty much, I was having serious bloating issues, intermittent constipation, uh, serious stomach pains, and um, and intermittent intermittent diarrhea and I could not figure out what it was. I've tried. I grew up in a very uh, heavily influenced Latin household and of course growing up Mexican uh, meat is a huge part of our culture and um, our day-to-day -day life, our family gatherings, our meals are based around meat so I feel like I grew up conditioned almost mm -hmm. to eat meat. Like yeah. in the morning I would have sausage or uh -huh. ham or something. Lunch I would have some sort of meat based mm -hmm. sandwich or tuna and then dinner I would have meat. But it was. Well. I've tried everything from a paleo diet, a FODMAP diet, a uh, gluten free diet, pretty much cutting out uh, all alcohol, cutting out all um, processed foods, just any everything that I could try. I did try going vegetarian once about mm -hmm. 10 years ago did now that, that I help? think about it. No, it did not because mm -hmm. I was eating, uh, I was still eating a lot of cheese, a mm, lot of some starches, dairy. carbs, yeah. just, uh, I wasn't doing it right mm -hmm. per se. Exactly. I, w I did grow up an athlete as well. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of sports did you play? I wrestled. Oh, cool. My entire life, yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's such high intensity mm -hmm. and uh, high energy sport and mm -hmm. this is cardio. So I would be so hungry, but I was just meat, carbs, 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 mm -hmm. carbs, just anything mm -hmm. to like mm -hmm. ease my hunger. And mm -hmm. I think that's what initially, what eventually led to my severe IBS mm -hmm. because of my long history of just eating poorly. But yeah. I finally decided to go to the doctor because my symptoms were getting so bad. I wasn't even able to sleep at night because my stomach would just hurt so bad. And I had a colonoscopy done. I had an endoscopy done. I, they ran all these other blood tests and it came back just as irritable bowel syndrome. Um, and did then, the doctor have any advice for you about that? Like, did they suggest the FODMAP diet or? Yes, well, the doctor was the one who suggested the FODMAP diet. Mm -hmm. And I tried that and still had zero luck uh, alleviating all of my uh, irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came across um, one of my friends who was vegan and I decided to try a vegan diet. I was very skeptical at first because there is a lot of stigmatism that comes with being vegan, like it's too hard, you don't get enough nutrients, and I was scared at first. It didn't even cross my mind until um, until about six months ago to even try it. But as soon as I became consistent and started eating the right things and making sure all of my meals were plant-based, immediately all my symptoms were gone. When I was eating a high-protein diet, which consisted of mainly chicken and protein supplements and protein bars and all that, um, I started getting flank pain, and I even had pilo one time and um what's pilo explain that for people who don't know pilo is a kidney infection mm -hmm. which is you know generally they start at, as a uti and they work their way up mm -hmm. to uh up to the kidneys mm -hmm. and i ended up it was so bad one time when i was home i ended up in the er and um i was in so much pain i was crying it was just awful and then I would have intermittent kidney pain uh, or flank pain, mm -hmm. and um, and I was constantly getting UTIs every once in a while. But mm -hmm. it's when Dr. Chen <laughs> <laughs> brought it up, um, asked my diet, and I was you know saying I try to eat at least a pound or one ounce of protein per pound. Which mm -hmm. I, for me, that's generally one forty grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. um, I did it really put things into perspective how much protein I was eating, mm -hmm. and. In, with the vegan diet as well, my flank pain went away. I haven't had any issues, no signs of UTIs, no mm -hmm. signs, zero flank pain. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, and I definitely don't eat 140 grams of protein, or grams, sorry, grams <laughs> of protein a day. That was pretty, that was a lot of protein. Yeah. <laughs> it actually came from a friend who is a competitive bodybuilder and powerlifter, and it just, I had no idea that he was vegan for the longest time until, you know, we started hanging out more, eating more, and then he finally talk to me about it and it just blew my mind. If this guy can mm -hmm. be uh, squat 600 pounds on a plant-based diet, like I should be able to be an athlete myself and stay healthy. And you know, he really talked to me a lot about um, just the benefits and uh, started talking more about ethical reasons and it really gave me a new perspective on animals and um, and the whole moral and ethical side of being vegan too. Yeah, my constipation was one thing that I struggled with after days. 
months mm-hmm. without having a document. And mm-hmm. I believe it was me because what I'm looking at everything retrospectively, the main course of my meal, the main part of my meal was mm-hmm. meat. It mm-hmm. was a huge mm-hmm. piece of meat or s- chicken or steak or yeah. turkey. And that was really what was, mm-hmm. my body was having issues digesting it. But as soon as I switched to a, a vegan diet within the first week, you were regular. very regular. Mm-hmm. It's about so lighter, much le- better. I had zero bloating, zero mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. sharp pains in my stomach. Uh, if it was, if anything, I was having more bowel movement fine which mm-hmm. is, that completely alleviated a lot of the pressure the that I was having I was just living with constant pressure on my mm-hmm, stomach mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I didn't realize how bad it was mm-hmm. until I switched to a vegan diet yeah. mm-hmm. it's, it's really easy uh, having a lot of places in Hawaii uh, mm-hmm. having a lot of vegan options or restaurants to go to mm-hmm, it gives mm-hmm. you a lot of ideas for cooking and then there's down the earth mm-hmm. and there's whole food. Like, um, uh, probably the same as if you didn't have caffeine for sure sure your, your so you kind of, go, of the day. Withdraw- and how long did that last Probably a couple days. It was mm-hmm. after about a week. I and just, then you were able to mm-hmm. just go without it. Mm-hmm. Do you still crave meat? Oh, uh, I was just talking about this earlier. Cheese is mm-hmm. what I crave. Mm-hmm. Meat? No, not so much. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, I think about how it hurts my stomach. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's cheese that has probably been the most difficult for mm-hmm. some reason. Mm-hmm. I, I crave cheese. How about those fake cheeses? Does that help you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That satisfies the craving? Mm-hmm. How long has it been now that you've been vegan? Probably about four or five months. Nice. So, so what yeah. do you think? Do you think you'll stick with this? or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And how has your athletic performance differed? Have you noticed any difference since you've become vegan? or? My endurance has skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. I last a lot longer in the gym. Uh-huh. I feel better. My recovery is faster. It's, it's crazy how diet can affect your performance, how much it can affect your performance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, as far as a, ve- a plant-based diet not being able to provide enough uh, nutrients and protein for athletes, uh, completely forget that, forget that ever existed, forget anybody ever said that. It is probably one of the biggest myths in that the food, meat industry or the food industry tries to put out there or that, uh, you know, the Western diet tries to say. Um, and if you... If you're desperate enough to get rid of your IBS symptoms, you're going to want to do a vegan diet. It's how much you're willing to um, care about yourself and care about your health. It all depends on how bad you want it and how much you want your symptoms to go away. And then eventually, like I said, it's going to be hard because we, the Western diet, we grew up conditioned that meat and dairy and animal byproducts need to be a part of our diet. Mm -hmm. But once you are able to let go of that and detach yourself from that, being vegan is completely easy. You and know, how do you deal with, like, when you go home with your family? Like, they're actually extremely supportive. Oh, cool. Because cancer runs in my family. Mm-hmm. They've also been reading more and more about mm-hmm. uh, about the vegan diet and what it can potentially do and, and prevent. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're slowly mm-hmm. switching over. They're cut out Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Good. So you've been a good influence. Yeah. That's yeah, wonderful. The health issues that can come from the Western diet down the road are very scary and almost mean not worth it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jade. That's great. (laughs) Thank you, Jade, for sharing your story with us. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Please go to graceandhawaii.com for more information. About a month or so into a vegan diet, my husband and I were at a party and they had a meat and cheese platter. And of course, I couldn't resist because it was there. (laughs) And so I ate a few pieces of meat and cheese, and within about a half an hour of my body trying to digest it, I immediately started getting sharp pains in my stomach. My bloating came back. It felt like I couldn't even suck it in pretty much, and I was completely uncomfortable the entire night, and <laughs> I m- immediately regretted it. So you paid for it right away. Yes. <laughs> yeah.